So, you know, I guess, you know, my style sometimes is a little bit abrasive and it's kind of a shock to some people, right? Because they probably think they're gonna get this little softball type interview. And then I hit them with all this stuff that really makes them think and makes them have introspection. Yes. It, it, would you say that is what happened with you? That's exactly what happened with me. Um, after me seeing you and- The long and short of it is that he's trying to get down to his mom. Um, you know, you know, you guys are from New Orleans. From New Orleans. And, uh, you know, I know y'all making some good stuff, man, so I already know. Gumbo, jambalaya, coffee, <laughs> stuffed peppers. <laughs> man, I already know. So, so of course, um, you know, we was going to try to get you, like, you know, get you, like, on the bus or some other way, but it just wasn't working out, man. It just hey, wasn't mom, working I'm out. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Wow. Mom, I'm on my way. A friend of mine is giving me a ride all the way to the house. All right. I know. God is good. Bye. <laughs> all right. All right. So we made it down here, man. We had a little bit of traffic, but so this is who? This is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> man, stop playing with me, right, man. Here, What's up, YouTube? Hit the like button. Share the video. Now back to the content. <laughs> all right. So, so here we are, man. So, you know. We're going to go ahead and so explain what's going on here. Well, I've been homeless for a long time. Um, I'm back on my feet, um, on my way to my mom's house to help with the Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful. Um, so, I, I mean, I'll just, I'll kind of explain what's going on. So, you know, this is my guy right here, man. This is definitely, you know, this is, well, this is one of my OGs out here, man, that, you know, if I need, if I need him more, yeah, let me tell you, put it like this, man. This ain't the guy you want to mess with right here, right? That way. And so, um, and so, you know, this is one of my guys, and you know, you know, I, I be riding around, you know, and he stopped me. Um, and so, you know, the yeah, so the long and short of it is that we're um, you know, listen, man, uh, my kids are getting their hair braided right now. I got a little bit of time. I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and shoot them on down there, man. So, um, uh, because because here's the other thing. You know, when we did the interview, you were still staying at Welcome House at that point, right? I was at right? the Welcome House at that time. And so, I mean, tell me what was really going on then, you know? Well, Do we have a history of drug, drug abuse? No, um, I've done drugs before in the past. I don't do anything now. The drugs that you did in the past, the hardest ones were what? Cocaine. Uh, crack or powder? Powder. Powder? Okay. Uh, when was the last time you did powder? Oh, man, it's been over three years. Over oh, three years? Okay. Okay. Back then, um, you know, I had backtrack started back using drugs uh welcome house was not the place for me to be at and you know i'm not gonna blame it on anything else because i shouldn't have been that weak but god is good i left the welcome house and back in the uh, gateway program i got my voucher back uh my disability everything is in order besides that i'm working two jobs so everything has been a blessing since the first since the last time we met you know? how'd you feel when you did the interview well, I felt like, you know, maybe my interview could help somebody else, you know what I'm saying, that really want to help for themselves. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've lived in over 16 different states. I make 60 next year. I walk from New York to Washington, D.C. to help homeless people help themselves. But everybody can fall short. And since the last time we did, did the interview, he inspired me to make sure that if you really want something, you got to go for it. No more pity party. Just be thankful one day at a time and move forward each and every day. So, you know, I guess, you know, my style sometimes is a little bit abrasive and it's kind of a shock to some people, right? Because they probably think they're gonna get this little softball type interview. And then I hit them with all this stuff that really makes them think and makes them have introspection. Yes. It, it, would you say that is what happened with you? That's exactly what happened with me. Um, after me seeing you and, 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 and it being inspired by, you know, Anybody that wants something, you can do it too. So I was very grateful to do the interview, but knowing that one thing, that I was already determined to be positive and move forward in life. And I'm very grateful, very grateful to have that experience to do the interview, um, knowing that that was not my point of view for us. That's what I wanted to be at in life. But, you know, I'm just very grateful. God does everything man, for, for anybody that really wants something, but you gotta believe in it and have faith in yourself. And so what about the kids, man? Like. Um you know, how, how's everything been, you know, since, the, like, did any of your family or anybody see the interview? My family saw the interview, uh, my kids saw it, and um, they were like, 
But Dad, we didn't know you needed help. No, I didn't really need help. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't want anybody to know that I was in that situation. You know what I'm saying? After being depressed, on the, you know, suffer from depression, and just wanted to make sure the person and nothing else had was an excuse for me to move forward in life. Uh, since I had the interview with you, I uh, got a job, uh, forklift driving in, I'm doing security at night. So, you know, like I said, they just had to warn some. Like I said, I'm almost 60. Uh, I'm in the best shape of my life. And I'm very, very grateful. Hey, man. And so you were saying about some, uh, you seen the grandkids since then? Oh, my grandkids are so wonderful. They were so excited to see me. Um, it inspired me so much. I couldn't do nothing but be focused. And I love them so much. I got eight grandkids, you know, and I'm just so thankful to be have them in my life. Um, make sure that I'm there so they won't make some of the same mistakes that I made. Can you can you picture the look on their face if if just, they were to happen to see you they were so on a crack bench? No, 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 listen to me. Okay. Can you imagine the look that would be on their face if they were to happen to see you in the middle of like a bench? I, um, I, I I wouldn't want to live anymore for them to see me in that kind so of So you, you don't want to do that at all? I, that was never my, my point of view to do it anyway. Just being depressed and going through certain, you know, aspects in life led me to do stuff like that. You know, like, like I said, not making an excuse for it, but that's not what I ever wanted to do anyway. You know, and right. I'm just very grateful that having an experience like that, knowing the difference that I can teach somebody else to make sure they never have to take that route themselves. And so you were saying something about... Um you're back in a relationship now? Or? Oh, yeah. I'm 23 years, my girl, Sherry Dennis. I love her so much, baby. I love you, baby. So, did she see the uh, the interview? I'm not sure if she's seen the interview yet, but uh, one thing she had, she always had love. Never gave up on me. Always had faith. I never stayed in an apartment. And um, these last three years have been something that was a test in life. So, I mean, you guys have been together for 23 years? 23 years. Never stayed. I always had a house. Paid 110000 in Ferrick and Farm for our last house. You know, and she stays in covering the Georgia now, and I'm just so very grateful. She is the salt of the earth. Well, so, I mean, how, how did y'all lose the house? We never lost the house. She sold the house. She sold it because she took too much money out of escrow, and the government had hit us for something like $50,000 because she took she took so much money that she wasn't supposed to touch. Okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, so we had to sell the house, and she had to get out of that file for uh, bankruptcy, and that led us through, you know, the separation. And so when, when when you guys separated, why didn't you like stay together though? We didn't stay together because she went to stay with her sister, and I went, you know, I went to the shelter. Okay, so is there a reason why her sister wouldn't let you stay with her? She would she would let me stay, but I just felt less than a man to go through something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I've always took care of her, took care of the family. You know, three wonderful kids. Um, you know, and I love them to death. I just had a granddaughter that was born three days ago. So you know, God congrats, is good. man. Yes, congrats. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, and so and so, I mean, how is it that you guys like got back together? Like, how did that go down? Well, we never really stayed apart, but we was always kept in contact with each other. But it was just time. She came back from Cabo, and she said, "I don't, um, you know, I don't want you staying out there." I said, "Well, maybe, you know, I never wanted to be out here." So we was always together. But sometimes you go through something to make sure you guys are equally yoked. So I want to marry her as soon as I can. I was about to say, twenty three years, you guys haven't got married. I'm about to marry. Let, her. let me ask. I mean. Why do you think you haven't gotten married up to this point? Well, I guess that was because of me. You know what I'm saying? I was still a little, you know, out in the street and, you know, looking for something that probably was better and it was nothing that was never better. You talking about, like, different women and stuff? Different women. Mm -hmm. I refuse to touch another woman now. And so are all three of your kids with her? No, there's no, I have no kids with her. Okay, you have no kids with her. I okay. No kids. Okay. And, and he called me Mr. Oliver till this day. Okay, okay, okay. All right, and so um, how old is she, by the way? Well, she's 50, no, she's 61. Okay, you guys are around the same age. Yeah, we're the same, almost the same age. All right, all right, man, well, congrats, man, congrats. Man. And so did, she just decided to come back. Like, it wasn't like she saw the video or no, she didn't, video, you know, did you no, call her? Or? No, she's been there with me through everything, thick and thin. And so Cabo, so that means she was on vacation? On vacation. Well, we went to vacation every year, 18 years. We've been on vacation every year. But she wanted me to go with her, and I couldn't because I had just started a new job. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. All right. Well, hey, listen, man. Like I say, um, man, I love hearing these great updates, man. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy that... What is it that, that you think was about the Welcome House that didn't allow you to be successful in that environment? 
in that environment, uh, there was no help. Uh, there was no counselors. There was nothing that was very great. Um, I had paid six months in advance, and and the problem came in when they told me that they had no money for me that I showing that I had an advance for six months, and that led me back out to using drugs again. I had been off of drugs for over two years and being depressed and never taking my medication and everything else led me back to doing drugs. So I left the welcome house, went back to Gateway and Gateway is helping me with everything that I need in life. So I'm very grateful for the changes that I make but if nothing changed, nothing changes. Well, uh, let me ask, I mean, what do you think, just speaking about changes, I mean, what do you think is going to be the change this time that's going to allow you to stay so the love of my grandkids, um, you know, there's, there's words can't even describe their expression, their embrace, uh, their love for me. Uh, I'm very grateful to have them. I love them more than life, life itself. You know, uh, there's nothing out here that I have ever done that I really need in life. The only thing I want now is just to be there for them. I pray every day that I'm strong and, and man enough to love God first. Every step of the way. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Well, listen, um, like I say, man, we're gonna be, we're gonna get you on down here to mom's, man. When last time you saw mom? Um, uh, about four weeks ago. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, was it down here in McDonough? Or did she come yeah, up no, to the city? Yeah, I went to her job and spent the whole day with her. Oh, she's still working? Yeah, she still loves to work. Where's she working at? She works at Publix. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Wow. Okay. She retired and went back to work. Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously. Yeah. I mean, because she's got to be in what her, uh, at least mid 70s. 70s. Maybe almost, almost, so 74. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look like she's 24. I bet, man. You know, black don't crack, man. Yeah, you know, black don't awesome. crack. Very beautiful. Hey, well, I can't wait, wait, wait to meet her, man. I can't so. wait for you to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, man. All right, so let and, and listen. We definitely uh, appreciate you doing this little interview in the car Thank with you us, so much. and um, we definitely wish you nothing but the best, man. We're proud of you. Keep it rocking and rolling, man. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, my Thank guy. you guys. Yep, yep. All right. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with a special. So you know, I got my guy with me, man. You know, this is my guy, and um, you know, he stopped me, and here we are in the car. All right, all right. So we made it down here, man. We had a little bit of traffic, but so this is who? This is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> man, stop playing with me, nah, man. Y'all, why y'all telling lies on national no TV, lies. man? No no. This ain't okay, this man. Right here, bro. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Where is the fountain of youth? Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Mom. I, I have nothing to do with that. God is in control of my life. Why you look so good? That's it. I don't know. I, I could say a few things that you got on that camera. <laughs> Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. And so, and so you from New Orleans as well? I'm from New Orleans. New Orleans. Now, my audience knows, man, I love New Orleans. I ain't going to lie. I hate the Saints. But I <laughs> love New Orleans, man. I love the culture. love the food. Yeah, yeah. So when did you move out here to Atlanta? Oh, I came out here in um, 1990. 96. 96. 96, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, so, you know, what, what do you think about your son and his journey and, you know, everything that he's going through? You know, he, me and him, you know, I I interviewed him several months ago. Yeah. Um, And, man, he's on an upper trajectory. He's I'm on an upper trajectory. I know where he's been and I know where he came from and I know where he's at now. He's in a good place right now. Man, I and tell I'm you what. And I'm proud of him. <laughs> so, listen, the only other thing is this, right? Right. Um, Am I going to be able to get a plate now? No, I haven't started. <laughs> oh, I bet. Now, I'm going to be able to get a plate tomorrow, though, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't started yeah, yet. I yes. just got stuff on, on the stove. Yeah. Just just came home from shopping. Yep. I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. Well, listen. We really appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you. You know you my guy, man. Yeah. So we really appreciate y'all, man. And man, happy Thanksgiving, happy all right? Thanksgiving, <laughs> all yeah. right. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, 